Now, as we said earlier, Zimbabwean Prime Minister Morgan Changirai is here in Washington seeking support for his country's recovery from years of turmoil and economic breakdown. VOA Zimbabwe service correspondent Blessing Zulu spoke with him at his hotel. We adopted as a government, as an inclusive government, to re-engage the international community at bilateral and multilateral level. Now, in engagement is not an event. It is a process. It is a confidence-building process. When we embarked on this trip, that was one of the objectives. The second objective was, and we don't have to hide it, the government needs a transitional support. Now, if you look at that holistically, one has to say one cannot just focus on one issue. Uh, you, we also have to say that in that engagement, there's a lot of education. There's misconception, there's perceptions that have been created. But there's also a point that we can clarify the current status of the country. Remember that uh, we have said that the new political dispensation uh, is an irreversible process. But it's not perfect. And uh, we have not reached what we would call sufficient levels of confidence in the international community. And looking at uh, the U.S. position, uh, Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, Johnny Carson, for example, has already declared that there have not been enough reforms in Harare uh, on a range of issues, including human rights and the rule of law, for Washington to provide major aid or consider lifting sanctions on President Mugabe and others. Are you discouraged, or do you think you can persuade President Obama to provide greater material support for your government and your programs? One does not prematurely state a position before you have engaged. Uh, I would, I'm here on an official visit, uh, and I'm hoping to engage the United States government at its highest level. And I'm hoping at every stage there is an understanding of where we stand. I'm not saying that everything on the ground is perfect. I'm saying that the process we have embarked on in creating the inclusive government is an irreversible process towards achieving democracy and transformation in the country. How best uh, do you see Zimbabwe moving forward? Well, what needs to be done is that we have not gone through this. We have had past experiences. We have had the experience of Matebele and massacres. People joined together as uh, ZANPF and the ZAPU. Uh, in spite of those previous experiences, we in, in 1980 uh, experienced the uh, reconciliation between blacks and whites. In spite of the experiences of the past, atrocities committed against the population. We are also going through another phase. Uh, and that in spite of the past atrocities committed, uh, we all have now come together to say there has to be national healing, there has to be reconciliation. And that can only be done between the victims and the perpetrators of those past experiences. Uh, can the inclusive government move forward on some of these uh, issues as it, as it is presently constituted? Uh, do you think President Mugabe, for example, and ZANU-PF are likely to come around on rights and rule of law in the foreseeable future? Or do you see a constant series of uh, deadlocks? No, I, I'm sure that uh, both ZANPF uh, and ourselves are committed to the global political agreement. 80% of that GPA is about rights of the people. Uh, and it is for us to use those benchmarks, because we have agreed on those benchmarks, to ensure that we implement the letter and spirit of those benchmarks. And for me, uh, I have not seen anything to demonstrate that there is an attempt to undermine the global political agreement by ZANU-PF or by President Mugabe. Uh, not that uh, I can determine how the international community view President Mugabe and his past. But I'm saying as far as the national agenda of democratization and stabilization, we are all moving. It may be slow, which causes us our frustration, but ultimately we are all aiming to fulfill the position of the global political agreement.